Hi everyone, on today's e-learning day, we are going to continue our work with understanding text structure. What is text structure? A structure is a building. So when we talk about text structure, we're referring to how that piece of text, how that passage, how that article was built. In other words, how was this put together? So as a reader, when I'm reading through informational passages, I need to ask myself, how was this information organized? There are five different types of text structure. Chronological, compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem solution. The last type is called main idea and supporting details, but you may also see this called description. Both description passages or main idea supporting details passages, both of those are going to center around one topic and both of them are going to give you lots of examples, features, and characteristics for that one particular topic. So you may see it called main idea in one place and you could see it referred to as description in another place, but that's the same kind of text structure. Let's look at chronological order first. Authors who are going to use chronological order if they want to explain how things will happen in a specific order. Sometimes this can be called sequence. Sometimes you might see it called time order. You will know if it's in chronological order because you will see special words. Things like first, next, then, finally. You'll also see lots of dates. When you see dates and those key words like first, next, after, finally, before, you will know this was written in a special sequence. You have two examples that go along with chronological order. The first example is an example with directions. When you're given directions, you have to do those directions in a specific order. Have you ever made macaroni and cheese? It's simple. First, boil some water and make some macaroni. Then, make your cheese sauce. After the cheese sauce is ready, mix it with the macaroni. Bake the entire thing in the oven. Finally, it's time to eat. You'll notice as you read through those directions, those signal words jumped out at us. First, then, after, finally. Make sure you've highlighted or circled those in your first example because these words help us to understand the order of the directions. The second example is a biography. Chronological passages can sometimes be biographies or history related. And if it's a person's biography about their life, you're going to see dates. Bell was born March 3rd, 1847 in Edinburgh, Scotland. While in the U.S., Bell invented and or improved a number of electrical technologies. He is best remembered as the inventor of the telephone in 1876. Bell died in Canada on August 2nd, 1922, at the age of 77. This gave me a lot of historical information about this person's life. And the signals that this was a chronological order were those dates. Make sure you've highlighted your dates in example number two. Now, let's suppose that an author wants to explain how these two birds are alike and how they're different. Chronological order wouldn't work here because I'm not talking about an order of events. So in this case, I would need to use comparing and contrasting. And if I wanted to tell you how these birds are similar or different, I would probably use keywords like similar, same, both. In contrast, however, different, Although, 
So if you are reading through a passage and you see these kinds of keywords, that's a clue that they are comparing something. Let's look at your compare and contrast example. In this passage, I can see two different types of birds, the cardinal and the cedar waxwing. These are two common birds. Both have crests on their heads and frequent bird feeders, but the birds have some differences. The male cardinal is bright red. Still, the waxwing is brown. The cedar waxwing often migrates from place to place. However, the cardinal stays in one place year after year. Did you see those signal words? Both. Differences. But still, however, these were clues. They're comparing these two different kinds of birds. Make sure you highlight or circle and underline those signal words for your compare and contrast example on number two. Sometimes a writer will want to explain how one event can lead to another event. So this kind of text structure is going to be called cause and effect. You will know it's cause and effect because you will probably see words like cause or effect in the passage. Sometimes you'll see phrases like as a result or consequently, since, because, and so. These are signals that there is a cause and effect relationship with this passage. The author could give me several things that caused one effect, or sometimes it might give me several effects and just tell me the one cause. So let's look at our cause and effect example. Passage one, the night's snowstorm had many effects. People were out shoveling snow from the sidewalks. The power lines were draped with ice. Snow plows drove down every street. Children were the happiest of all because the unexpected snow caused school to be canceled. What you need to do here is you need to underline our cause. What caused all of these different events? It was the night's snowstorm. So underline night's snowstorm. Now, let's take our pencil and circle all of the different things that happened because of that snowstorm. Now, I can't circle this on my computer screen, but you can take your pencil and circle. People had to shovel snow. You can also circle the power lines that were draped or covered with ice. Another thing you can circle that happened were the snow plows that had to remove all the snow from the streets. What else happened because of the snow? Well, you can circle that school was canceled. These are all effects. All of these are things that happened because of the snow. This next cause and effect example is a little bit longer. Sometimes it can be tricky when you're reading a longer passage to find that cause and effect relationship. So it's important to continue to scan and look for some of those clue words like because or why, result, reason, because those signal words will help you find where the cause and effect relationship is when you have a longer informational passage. Follow along as I read this one. It's important to remember that although many people found fame and fortune during the gold rush, not everyone's story had such a happy ending. Certain classes and races had their rights trampled on during the rush for gold. As a result, 
of word getting out about gold in California, workers from China flooded into San Francisco. At first, the other miners were welcoming and everyone was free to seek their fortune in California. However, since more and more Chinese citizens participated in mining for gold, the other miners began to worry that these new settlers would take away jobs and opportunities from them. Ultimately, because of intense discrimination, Chinese American miners began to struggle for their rights. So in this longer passage, I noticed several clue words that there was a cause and effect relationship. One big one was because. They want me to underline some big thing that happened in this passage. So take your pencil and underline where it says Chinese American miners began to struggle for their rights. That is something that happened during this time in history. Now let's take our pencil and circle why. Why were the Chinese American miners struggling for their rights? Well, the reason why was because people had a lot of discrimination against them. So take your pencil and circle because of intense discrimination. Let's look at another kind of text structure, problem and solution. Sometimes the author wants to explain a problem. And then after they explain that problem, they're going to show one or sometimes more than one possible solution. So when you see this kind of text structure, it's going to be called problem and solution. You will know it's problem and solution when you see words like problem, solution. Sometimes you can see words like issue or idea, but make sure when you're reading, if you see those signal words, that a solution is given, that you are reading the solution in the passage. So let's look at some examples. Park school had a terrible problem. Every day at recess, students would argue over the slides. Teachers had to spend time every day taking care of the arguments. Finally, one teacher came up with a great solution. They bought another set of slides so that everyone could enjoy all right, I want you to take your pencil and underline the problem one time. Underline the sentence, every day at recess, students would argue over the slides. That was the big problem. Now take your pencil and I want you to underline, you can underline it twice, or you could highlight or circle, what was the solution? How did they fix this problem? They fixed it by buying another set of slides so that everyone could enjoy it. All right, now this passage has a little bit more of a difficult problem and solution. As we read, I want you to be thinking about what could this problem be? What could this solution be? The Chesapeake Bay faces uncertain future. Issues such as pesticides, too many nutrients, and habitat loss all threaten the bay's water quality and animal life. However, scientists are hopeful that the future may be brighter. If everyone in the Chesapeake Bay watershed works together, solutions may be found. Okay, so let's underline the problems. The problems were 
the pesticides, the nutrients and habitat, habitat loss that all threatened the water quality. That's a big problem. Now take your pencil and underline twice or circle, how are you gonna fix this? They're gonna fix it by everyone in that area working together. If we work together, we can conquer this problem. So what you are going to do now is you are going to read through several different passages. You need to look for some signal words to help you figure out which text structure is this. And then after you have circled, underlined, or highlighted your signal words, you're going to write down which text structure you think it is. Here's your first one. When the immigrants first arrived at Ellis Island, information about them was recorded. Next, each immigrant underwent a physical examination. Finally, they were allowed into the United States. They took them by boat and let them off at the New York Harbor. Did you see any signal words that you could highlight? Did you see any words that you could underline or circle helping you figure out what this passage is? I saw some. First. Next. Finally. What? text structure is this. Go ahead and write down the text structure you think it is. All right, let's look at passage two. Some scientists are worried about what will happen to people and animals if large forest jungles in the world are destroyed. These trees and green plants in the forest and jungles produce oxygen, which is released into the atmosphere. Animals and people need this oxygen to breathe. If huge areas of green plants and trees are destroyed, there will not be enough oxygen produced to keep the people and the animals alive. Oh my goodness. As we're reading through here, I noticed, hey, they're worried about something. All right, let's highlight that. Well, what are they worried about? Uh-oh. Well, I think I'd be worried if there's not enough oxygen to keep the people and the animals alive. I'd be worried about that, too. Okay, we got to fix this. So, how are they going to fix it? What should be done? People need to restore or fix the ruined forest land along with protecting areas of forest that already exist. We need to stop allowing big businesses to cut down trees to build suburbs. I saw a signal word here we're going to try and fix this. Okay, so if they're talking about some big issue that they're worried about and something that they need to do to fix it, what text structure do you think this could be? All right, go ahead and write down what text structure you think passage two is. Passage three. Clara Barton. This sounds like it might be a biography. Clara Barton was born in Oxford, Massachusetts. She taught school and worked at the United States Patent Office. When the Civil War broke out, Clara worked as a nurse. She brought supplies to soldiers and worked on the battlefield. In fact, she was called Angel of the Battlefield. In 1869, 
Clara went to Europe. There she worked with the International Red Cross. Clara returned to the U.S. in 1873. In 1881, she set up the American Red Cross. Clara Barton helped many people in her lifetime. As I was reading through this biography, I noticed some signals. I saw lots of dates, 1869, and then another date after that, 1873, 1881. If you highlight each of those dates, those are signals as to what the text structure is. Go ahead and write down what you think the text structure is for passage three. Let's read passage four. During the Revolutionary War and for a long time afterwards, colonists used British, French, and Spanish money. Because of the British government would not allow colonists to make their own coins, they made paper money instead. And by the mid 1700s, there was more paper money than there were gold or silver for which bills could be traded. As a result, the British government ordered the colonists to stop using paper money. Do you see any signal words here that you could circle or highlight? I see one. Because. All right, make sure you highlight that one. What other one do you see? I see a phrase down here, as a result. When you see words like because, and as a result, that helps me know what the text structure is. And if you can't remember, flip back in your notes at some of the key words that we talked about in the beginning of our video. Because and as a result, tell me what text structure. Go ahead and write it down, and then let's look at passage 5. Passage five should be really easy because this one was actually in our homework packet that we read through this week. As young boys, Wilbur and Orville Wright sold their homemade mechanical toys. In their 20s, the boys made bikes in their bicycle repair shop in Dayton, Ohio. Into their 30s, they built their own flying machines. The Wright brothers began gliders. They test wind gliders near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. They chose this location because of the constant wind. In order to increase the glider's effectiveness, they built six foot wind tunnel where they could test their new wing designs. After building and flying almost a thousand gliders, they found the right design. Then they built an airplane that was powered by motor or engine. And in 1903, Wilbur and Orville spent less than a thousand dollars to build Flyer One, a gasoline powered airplane. The wings were 40 feet across. With a pilot aboard, it weighed 750 pounds. On December 17, 1903, Orville flew Flyer 1 120 feet for 12 seconds. Later that day, Wilbur flew it 853 feet and was airborne for 59 seconds. The age of flight had arrived. You should remember what this text structure was when we read through it in our homework packet. But in case you can't remember, look for your signal words. Some of your signal words that you can highlight or circle and underline are those dates. I saw some dates in here a couple of times. I also saw some other signal words like later, after, and 
then when you see those words like began, these dates and signal words are telling me it's what text structure. Go ahead and write down the text structure for passage five. Let's look at passage six. Chimpanzees and humans are alike in many ways. A baby chimp laughs when its mother tickles it. After chimpanzees fight, they kiss and make up. When one chimpanzee comforts another, it gives a hug or a pat on the back. There are, of course, many ways that chimpanzees and humans are different. Chimpanzees are smaller and stronger than humans. An adult male chimpanzee stands three or four feet tall and weighs about 100 pounds. But a chimpanzee can lift more weight than a man who is six feet tall. When I was reading through this passage, I noticed, okay, it's talking about two topics. I can circle and highlight chimpanzees. I can also circle and highlight humans. I'm talking about two different things. All right, what other words did I see that helped me figure out this text structure? I see this word alike. Hmm, what else did I see? Oh, it talked about how these two topics, chimpanzees and humans, are different. What text structure could this be if I talk about how they are alike and how they are different? Go ahead and write down your answer for passage seven. Sometimes it rains so much that the earth moves. If it rains a lot in a short amount of time, the ground gets soaked. As a result, the hard ground turns to soft mud. And in very hilly areas, this wet ground can result in a landslide. When this happens, mud starts to flow down a hillside. The land moves faster and faster as it goes down the steep hill, picking up more and more dirt, mud, and rocks as it moves along and causes mudslides to grow. It's similar to the way a snowball gets bigger and bigger when you roll it in the snow. Landslides can cause a lot of damage. When I was reading through here, I noticed a few signal words that can help me figure out how this passage was structured or organized. I can highlight the word result. What other signal words did you see? Oh, down here I saw the signal word cause. I saw cause here as well. When you see as a result or cause several times in a passage, that's a key. It's what text structure. Go ahead and write down your answer for passage seven. Passage eight, crocodiles and alligators. The crocodile has a pointy snout while the alligator's snout is rounder. The crocodile weighs less than the alligator and can move faster. Both animals have an extra long lower tooth. When the crocodile's mouth is closed, you can see this long tooth. However, when the alligator's mouth is closed, the tooth is hidden inside the mouth. As we were reading through here, I noticed it talking about two different topics. So you can take your pencil and circle your two topics. We're talking about crocodiles. We're also talking about alligators. But as we were reading about the crocodiles and the alligators, I noticed they told me some things that both the animals have. There's a signal word. 
And I also noticed where it talked about, however, one is a little different. So two topics, signal words, both, and however, what is the text structure for passage eight? Wow, we have talked about a lot of text structures so far. We have looked at chronological order, compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem and solution. But don't forget, there's another text structure type that we haven't really talked a lot about. This text structure is the main idea details text structure. And in class this past week and last week, we sometimes referred to this one as description. In this kind of paragraph, the author is going to present a big statement, a main idea, and then they're going to support that statement by giving you several key details, several specific examples, several characteristics to describe that main idea a little more. Here's an example of a description passage that's going to help me picture that big main idea. Simple machines are devices that make work easier. There are many types. A wedge is an example. It's used to pry open something. A pulley is another example. Pulleys pull an object from a lower to higher area. You will notice in your packet that your main idea, your big topic was bolded. This passage is all about simple machines. And then you will notice as we were reading, there were some sentences that were underlined. Those sentences that you had underlined, those were some details that were telling you a little bit more about these simple machines. So you had a sentence that was underlined to say that they can pry something open, and you had another sentence that was underlined to say that they can pull an object from lower to higher. Those details told me more about simple machines. Let's look at the next example about Russia. In the example below, your main idea has been bolded or highlighted. What you need to do as you're reading is see if you can find two more details that you can underline that tell us a little bit more about that main idea. Russia has a population of 142 million people. A statue called Motherland serves as the Russian Statue of Liberty. It's a woman with her arms spread wide. She's holding a sword in one hand it looks as if she's leading an army into battle. Motherland was built in honor of the great Russian victory against the Germans during World War II. Okay, this passage is mainly about this Motherland statue. So that's the sentence that's highlighted bold. Can you take your pencil and underline some details that will tell me or describe for me a little more about this statue? Can you underline a sentence that tells me maybe what it looks like that can describe for me what this statue is? Take your pencil and underline the sentence. It's a woman with her arms spread open wide. That's telling me a little bit more about the statue. You could also underline, she's holding a sword. 
that's telling me a little bit more about this statue. Those are details that support our main idea of the statue. A confirmation dog show is sort of like a beauty contest for dogs. But some dogs are more than just pretty. They are smart and talented too. For these dogs, there are sports contests. In obedience trials, dogs are judged on how well they mind their handlers. In agility trials, dogs run through obstacle courses. These dogs are judged on how quickly and gracefully they run. Dogs can even compete in hunting, tracking, or herding contests. So, even if a dog is not the prettiest pooch on the planet, it can complete and show off its smarts and talents. As we were reading through here, I realized this paragraph is all about dogs and some of their sports contests. So your sentence that's bolded for these dogs, there are sports contests, that's my main idea. That's my big topic in the paragraph. Can we find some details that tell me about the sports contests? Let's take our pencil and underline a detail. What's one kind of contest? Oh, I could underline obedience trials. That contest judges them on how they mind. Can you find another detail that tells me about another sport contest? Take your pencil and underline. In agility trials, the dogs run through the obstacle courses. Those are two details that describe more about your sports contest. Go ahead and underline your two details for your passage. Now it's your turn. On the next few slides or the next few paragraphs in your packet, you're going to be reading a little more about the Great Chicago Fire we read a little bit about the Chicago fire in our homework packet this week. Your task is to try and decide what the text structure is for each one of those paragraphs. Remember, understanding how that passage was written, understanding how it was structured or organized, that is going to help you comprehend what you are reading. So the answers that you will write down for number one, two, three, and four at the end of your packet, those answers could be chronological order, compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem solution, or main idea description. I want you to read through each one of these See if you can find some words that were highlighted and see if you can label what its text structure is. Go ahead and finish the rest of your packet and remember to bring it back and turn it in so you can get credit for your reading on Monday.